the community and, and hopefully be a resource for the parents and families and caregivers on the call. So I'm Himali Bandia, Director of Project Management. And um, what I'll do is sort of talk for a little bit, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I encourage you to use the chat feature throughout to ask questions. Um, I won't always be able to get to them right away if it'll be in the first 15 minutes, but I'll definitely make sure I get that to them at the end. And then at the end, after I sort of do my little talk um, through, if you want to ask a question using your voice, feel free to unmute and, and just ask it. If you prefer to just chat, that's okay too. Um, I just asked that the first, this next 10, 15 minutes, if you could keep yourself on mute just so there isn't background noise. That's it, yeah. So be happy to answer any questions. Let me just share my screen here. I've got a PowerPoint screen two. Everybody see that? And can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, hang on. Let's see. Got a little, oh, here we go. All right. So it's on two screens here, so I apologize. So today I just want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing at Aster, what you as parents, caregivers, family members can do to help and, and the services that are available. And so let's start with what we're seeing. We are seeing stressed out and depleted parents. Um, it's been quite a challenging 14, 15 months. Um, and we recognize that in trying to take care of your children, of other people in your home, that of all the people, parents are particularly um, depleted. And, and um, so we, we recognize that and, and we thank you for being the heroes that you are, but we, you know, that's some of what we're seeing. Um, we're seeing in children increased anxiety, increased depression, and an increased use of services. And so I'll, I'll talk through all of our programs and services, but we're seeing a lot of our um, high risk, high needs services being utilized to the max. For the first time ever, we have, we don't keep wait lists for the crisis programs, but we have essentially wait lists for those programs. We have tons and tons of phone calls and referrals for those really high needs, high risk, crisis type programs. Um, we're also seeing an increase in the kinds of cases that we're getting. So even in our lower to moderate risk programs, we're seeing higher needs, more, more vulnerable kids. And so um, we're just seeing a lot, a lot of need, a lot of increased need, um, and, and, and a, a lot of challenges um, that are either exacerbated or, or new. Uh, to children and, and families in our community. Um, so what you could do. Um, so first is give yourself a break. I mean, the fact that you're here trying to do the best that you can for the children in your home is, is such a beautiful thing. Um, it's hard. It's, it's a really hard situation right now, and it hopefully will be getting easier soon. Um, but I think the first sort of Thing that I can say is give yourself a break. Um, the next uh, piece is use your resources. Um, there are a ton of community-based resources that I'll talk about at Aster, school resources that you have that are free or really close to free um, that I really encourage you to utilize. Um, they're, they're for you to utilize, so I encourage you to take advantage of that. So let me tell you a little bit about what we do at Aster. Um, here is sort of like a nice little circle array of all of our services and programs. And I'll go through some of the ones and highlight the ones that are um, used a lot by, by parents and caregivers of school-aged children. Um, so our first is our counseling center. So our counseling centers are sort of, I call it our, our front door, um, because the counseling centers serve the largest number of children in our um, service array. We serve about 10,000 kids a year in our counseling centers, but they, they also are the most common first stop, most common first stop for, for a lot of kids. And our counseling centers are exactly what they sound like. 
they are for an individual child who's struggling, who needs uh, individual therapy. Maybe they could benefit from group therapy. Maybe they could benefit from family therapy. Maybe they need um, a psychiatric evaluation or um, some kind of medication management. All of those, one or more of those items can be um, provided at one of our counseling centers. Um, and so the cost is your insurance. And so um, we accept all the insurances, even accept no insurance. We have a sliding scale based on a family's income. Um, so these are usually you know, free or very, very close to free services. And um, we have a ton of them. And right now, because of the pandemic, we are uh, doing a hybrid model. So we have about 50% of our um, work is telehealth through Zoom and things like video conferencing, and about half of our work is in person. And so um, that is sort of, you know, it's, it's good and bad. I think um, right last year in March when we had to make the transition, everyone had to go to telehealth. And there were some, some benefits to that because there's some families who can't afford gas or don't have a car or, or you know, I'm just managing a lot of stuff and trying to get that kid to that therapy appointment on time is just a lot to manage and we get that. And so telehealth was really great because it sort of took out all of those obstacles. Um, it also helped because there's some kids who just feel really comfortable in their home. And so if they're in their home, they feel a little bit more ready to talk to a stranger versus in a, in a, one of our counseling centers that's sort of this foreign place that they don't know. However, we recognize, uh, we recognize during that time, and we certainly know that now, that telehealth is not for everybody. It's the same way that some, some kids, some students thrive in remote learning and some don't, it's the same way for, for our, our kids who need therapy. And, and certainly for the real little ones, you know, it just doesn't work and we know that. And so we, we, we've done our best throughout the pandemic, but right now we're about 50-50 and we're really trying to stay in, in a telehealth, in a hybrid model. So we have some telehealth and some in-person because we recognize that um, family choice matters. And, and if that family or if that child benefits from that particular modality, we, we wanna be able to offer it. Um, so the two I think that would be most appropriate for this are our Beacon or Poughkeepsie locations. Again, because of telehealth, if that's the way you're going, you could essentially call any of these numbers and, and get what you need. But um, those are the two in-person sites um, if that's what you were looking to do. And all you do is really simply just call them and schedule an intake. We even have some like same day appointments, um, especially with telehealth. And so we uh, encourage you to do that. Um, School-based, and of course there's all these acronyms. So I do apologize in advance. School-based behavioral health and training services. So we have some of these counseling centers embedded in some schools in Dutchess County. Um, we also provide a ton of professional development and training and different consultation projects with schools. We do pro talks like this where we talk through our services. So that's a little bit more for the school personnel in the room. Um, ECCSI. So this is a lovely, wonderful service that is for, um, that's for any Dutchess County resident. So that resident, that resident could be um, a pregnant mom up into an 18 year old child, almost adult. Um, and this is really if there's a child that's in two or more systems, lots, you know, and typically when children are in two or three, four, five, six systems, it can be really challenging to navigate all of those places, people, DSS and probation and social services and educational needs. And so this particular program for free hooks up with that family with a caseworker, case manager, caseworker to be able to just manage all of those systems, get everybody on the same page, figure out some um, communication techniques, kind of facilitate the family with whatever it is they need, both clinically and non-clinically, because sometimes you need therapy and sometimes you just need someone to help you pay for your electricity. And we, we get that. And so ECCSI is really great because they sort of cut through all of those pieces. And it's great. Um, care management is a very similar program, but care management is a Medicaid only program. So ECCSI is any Dutchess County resident, Care management is only for Medicaid um, 
families, families who have Medicaid. There's a couple slots in each of the counties that we're in that are for non-Medicaid, um, but that's pretty, they're, they're pretty few and far between. So it's typically a, a similar kind of program, cutting through all those systems, helping a family just manage all of the things that it means to be a parent of a kid with some complex needs. Um, within that care management um, program, there's a couple of different services beyond just having sort of a case manager or case worker within the family. There's also some clinical and non-clinical programs within that. And so these are some examples, think it are, is that clinical or non-clinical programs that, that are within care management. And so that is in the home, in the community, um, meeting those family needs and, and whatever that, that may be. Spending time with that child one-on-one -on -one to build some skills, spending time with the family doing some therapy, spending time with one of the parents or caregivers, helping kind of manage appointments or educational needs, that kind of thing. And then we have some educational programs too. We have Head Start and Early Head Start. We are the Head Start provider in Dutchess County. And so Head Start, I think most people kind of know what that is, but it's a federally funded preschool uh, that has a ton of lovely therapeutic and other similar supports. Um, and it is an income-based program. So it's free for those who qualify. So you have to qualify in that sort of low income threshold. Um, and it's like any other preschool. Um, and we, those are our six locations. Uh, Home-based crisis intervention, HBCI. So home-based crisis intervention is, I was talking earlier about those high needs or high risk crisis programs that have been really full recently. This is one of those. Um, and this is a program that's really good for kids who are either at risk of hospitalization, at risk of out-of-home placement, or at risk or, or, or coming out of a hospital, sort of a step down or a step up um, based on what they need. And this is an intensive therapeutic program. This is you know, two, three times a week, a clinician in the home for 90 minutes each time. And it's a family therapy model, highly clinical, but also addresses all of those other non-clinical needs. Um, and so this, this is a uh, you know, high needs population, high needs kids. Uh, it's, we charge the family's insurance, so it's essentially free. Um, and anyone really can refer um, to this program. Similar to that, so HBCI is a um, program that's after school, before school, you know, kind of in between, you know, the, the kid is going to their normal school placement, whatever that is. The, our adolescent partial hospitalization program is an alternative to school. So it's a similar kind of um, population in terms of kids who are at risk of inpatient hospitalization, kids who are at risk of out of home placement or kids coming out of, out of home placement, out of a hospital, um, but it's an alternative to school. So it's, uh, if you, many, many hours in the day of therapeutic supports, group supports, individual family, and then a couple hours of school as well. Um, but way fewer hours of school than a normal school day because they're really trying to get that kid. Honestly, this program is maybe a couple weeks, two weeks, three weeks max, and then getting that kid back into the normal school placement. And that's the kind of idea for this. Um, another program that a parent, family, parent, caregiver can, can just refer on their own. They don't need any kind of Special. In fact, all the programs today, no one needs any special um, referral form that you can just call and say, I, I want this for my child. Um, and um, this is also an insurance-based program, any insurance or no insurance as usual. Uh, we also have a residential facility in Rhinebeck. Some of you have maybe driven past it. Um, and those are kids between five and 13, um, kids that live here who are, uh, have, have struggled with severe mental illness. And we've got, of course, 24 seven sports and, and, and that kind of a thing. Um, attached to the residential facility is our Astro Learning Center. So this is a K through eight school that all of the residential kids attend. However, it is a, as you can imagine, a therapeutic school. And so um, because of these small classroom sizes and a lot of that extra support, therapeutic support, as well as edu educational support in, during the, the school day. Uh, we uh, have day students who also attend. Um, we have a number of day slots. So we have some day students and then all of our residential kids 
voting is attached to the building in Linden. Um, and then Project Hope, maybe you've seen some of these ads um, on TV or, or, or other places. Um, Project Hope is a FEMA, federally funded FEMA grant program that is administered at the state level in New York. And we at Aster are one of the providers. So they have a ton of different providers that they give funding to, to provide these services. Now I've talked a lot about educational services or mental health services. Project Hope is for any need at all. The idea that was that COVID, and I think you all will agree, COVID has had so many impacts in families, housing, housing insecurity, um, food insecurity, transportation, education, mental health, financial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so what this project hope is meant to do is that there's crisis counselors that anybody can call and you can see that phone number right there. And a crisis counselor will do a quick screener with that family or that child or whomever, or usually both, and say, okay, here are some of the needs that this family and or child has. Hook that family up with some referrals, do some linkages in the community, some warm handoffs to meet those needs and then move on to manage another family's needs. So it's short term, three sessions, five sessions, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and it's really to manage absolutely any need associated with the pandemic, which is basically everything, especially now. Um, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is we have a therapeutic foster care program. So if everything I just said, um, made you think of kids in the community, made you sort of feel for some of these kids who are um, in need of homes. Uh, our foster care program is in need of those homes. And so if you're interested in becoming a foster care parent, a foster care family, foster care home, you know, we encourage you to call that number. Even if you're just thinking about it, feel free to call and just find out more about it. Um, we serve a higher needs population. And so Traditional foster care through like the county governments has um, a, a kids that they serve. And then when those kids have complex needs or mo have multiple homes or just a lot of really a lot of trauma, um, they uh, assign those kids to, to our team. And we um, place those kids because we, we also pay at a higher rate, but also because we provide 24 seven support for those families. We um, have a lot of nursing staff, clinical staff, caseworkers who are available um, to those parents. We do a lot of training and, and, and that kind of a thing. And so um, because they're higher needs kids, there's of course higher supports, larger supports, greater supports for the families. So just my little plug, if, if any of this is resonating with you or thinking about them, you know, we encourage you, we, we always need good foster homes in Dutchess County. So that's um, what I have for y'all today. I'd love uh, to take a few minutes to, to have some questions. Here's my information. Feel free to email me, call me, whatever you need. Um, I'm happy to be here uh, to, to facilitate a referral or if you're not really sure what to do or where to go, I'm happy, happy to help. Any questions? Gonna look at the chat real quick. It's okay. If you don't wanna send it to everybody, you can just direct message me a question. That's okay too. All right. Okay, so I can't thank you enough for providing us with such helpful information. And as I said, this is recorded. So we will absolutely share this information with um, our community and we'll make sure that they have the most important contact um, information so that if they did have questions and concerns or maybe weren't comfortable asking or after they watch the video, if they need some follow up that they knew who they know who they can reach out to. So again, we cannot thank Aster Services enough. You have been such an incredible partner um, to us at the Wappinger Central School District. And we really appreciate everything you do for our students and our families. Um, and we really appreciate this presentation tonight. So I and I, if, I, if I don't, if you don't mind, I'd like to interject, as I said, I'm Tracy and I work for Aster as well. I work for early childhood programs. So, um, we serve the zero to five population. 
and we do uh, work with our families as well. We um, use mental health professionals who uh, introduce the pyramid model. We have uh, several toolkits that we use for parents that are stressed, depleted, uh, or for the children as well. So I know you're saying you're from the Wapacha Central School District. Um, so your population is a little older, but we also are taking the necessary steps to help the families in need as well for that age population, for a younger age population. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that information. And, you know, we do have the really young kids um, at the elementary level and even some of the students that we serve as at like a, um, you know, like a preschool level. So the information is, is helpful for the entire community. So I really appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, and I wish everybody a fantastic evening. And I guess this concludes our presentation.